So during the early 1920s, an average of 25,000 colonial French soldiers participated in the occupation of German territory west of the River Rhine. The vast majority of these troops came from Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia, so Arab Middle Eastern countries, with significant smaller contingents sailing from Indochina, Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, Madagascar, and of course, the most devastating of them all, Senegal. The stationing of colonial troops in the Rhineland enabled for French authorities to demobilize European French soldiers more quickly to aid in the reconstruction home effort at home. But a more sinister plan was a certain element of psychological warfare may have also been at play with the role of the decision of deploying colonial troops or less than human troops in a white man's homeland. So after all, to rub salt in the wound, Germany lost its own colonies in 1919. German pro-colonial revisionists clearly viewed the presence of African occupational soldiers as a provocation, contrasting the alleged depravity of French colonial subjects from the Senegalese Talelos and Indochina with the myth of the loyal Ascari, who they claim had remained disciplined and true to the German master to the end. So the movement against the African French colonial soldiers knew their racist impotence, or what we would call in popular culture, the Schwarzschiss Schramm am Rhein, or the Black Horror on the Rhein. It emerged after the, af it emerged after the aftermath of the failed right-wing cap Luch coup in March 1920, and reached its zenith during the 1920s and even into early Nazi propaganda in the 1930s. So what was the Schwarzschiss Schramm? And what was the propaganda? Centered on highly graphic depictions of alleged sexual crimes committed by African soldiers against the heinous women and even their children. The rape of innocent German maidens by African barbarians functioned in the metaphor of Germany's brutal subjugation to the blacks or the Schwarzen Schlamm. Under the, under the Versailles Treaty in particular, so the French were to blame as well and it was aimed to deflect attention away from the debate over Germany's war crimes as well. Snakey buggers, snakey. So there is some truth to the propaganda, of course there were some sex starved men after the war, but it was blown to such a proportion that it is considered propaganda. Within the Rhine itself, a broad political spectrum ranging from majority social democrats or left-leaning to the nationalist right-wing supporters or Nazis, the protests against the Schrastrum Schramm only the parties of the radical left, or even the communists, refused to participate. So even the communists were kind of like those those blacks though. The Reich government, or the Weimar German Republic government, played a major, critical, and even important role in orchestrating the propaganda and the propaganda campaign against the Schrastrum Schramm. At national and even at regional levels, officials collaborated closely with the municipality of the private individuals and associations. Thus, for instance, the semi-official but still recognized Reichlich Women's League or the Reichlich Frauen Liga or the RFL coordinated with the Schwarzschlamm and the protests of a broad range of women's organizations and often relied on feminist and international networks to distribute their propaganda abroad. Internationally, the Black Horror or the Schwarzschlamm propaganda initially enjoyed significant popular appeal, especially within America and other white European descendant nations, especially in Austria, England, Sweden, and of course, our boy, the United States of America. The British Labour politician Edmund Devon Morrill became a vocal supporter for the Schwarzschlamm campaign. At the turn of the 20th century, Morrill had been a leader of the movement against Leopold II, King of the Belgians, and the brutal regime of the Congo Free State which claimed the lives of millions of Africans and even decapitated most of them, starving them to death with no hands. If you get what I'm saying. Morel attacked the French government for tearing African soldiers from their families, their homelands, and for losing them as cannon fodder in this imperialist war. So the Africans men, primitive sex drive, he argued, though necessary to guarantee species survival in the harsh African environment, inevitably resulted in the mass rapes of white women once these troops were thus upon the Rhineland. Morrill's disturbing contribution of humanitarian concerns and racist stereotypes, as well as his close collaboration with the German government and German nationalist leagues in its production of the Black Horror propaganda. So, 
on one hand, in the early 1920s, Allied critics of imperialism often sided with their German opponents of France's ability and willingness to send African troops, even though the latter included many German pro-colonialist revisionists. Pro-colonialists on the Entente countryside, on the other hand, frequently found themselves confronted by the task of defending African soldiers against accusations of rape and barbarism that had long been staples of racist justifications of the white man's burden to cleanse Africa of such rape and barbarism and even slavery. They did slavery, so yeah, they, they got rid of slavery. Give them that. One tick. The perplexing political realignment evidence over the course of the Black Horror or the Swashle Swam campaign Underline the wars on settling implications of the stability of the inherited colonial hierarchies and the moves of the racialist discourse within Europe itself. Black or not to be black. Middle East or not to carve up the Middle East and make a conflict spanning today. Asia, communist? That is the question. We're going to start with tensions and then we're going to decline. And of course, 1933 with the Rhineland Bastards. At least as striking as the Black Horror or Shras Rus Ram campaign initially succeeded, it had a rather swift demise after 1921. Increasingly, Shras Rus Ram propaganda evoked domestic and international criticism of both the right and the left. This promoted German officials to intervene against some of the more radical racist strands within the movement, but the cat was out of the bag, and ultimately, to scale down government involvement in the campaign, they pretty much ended it all together in 1921-22. So for instance, Bavarian and Reich officials were instrumental in forcing the right-wing extremist president of the Munich-based German Emergency League against the Black Horror, or the Deutsche Notbund gegen die Schwarzschrum Schramm, or the DNB, Herrick Dissler, to step down and terminate his membership of the Bavarian DNB. In August 1921, after reported protests by French ambassador, the appeal broadened the German censorship board of the Film Burkpulstel, banned the film propaganda of Die Swastram in 1921, directed by Karl Buschner, for which the Dessler had written the screenplay. Swastram propaganda increasingly strained the relations between the population of the occupied Rhineland and the Reich government, or the Weimar government. It was a sensitive issue, especially in light of the significant popular support of the Heinrich autonomy during the immediate post-war years. According to more extreme forms of the Schwarzschild propaganda, or Black Horror propaganda, there were sexual crimes, racial miscongeneration, or I, the best way to put it is Rhineland bastards, and more general lawlessness were rampant in the occupied territories than in the Weimar Republic. This result in decline tourism was a major blow to the Rheinisch economy. The, ap the apocalyptic scenario of the alleged imminent complete malatization or the Malatschachron of the Rhineland cherished by the DMB propagandists formed part of a formed part of a formed part of a broader right wing misogynist disclosure about white shame or white shame, which accused especially working class Rhineish women of sleeping with national and racial enemies. This questioning of the proletariat's women's patriotic loyalties pointed to the pronounced class bias frequently visible in the black color propaganda. The fact that the Rhineish women's leaders resented accusations of immorality and patriotic unsurlivability leveled at them by right-wing extremists was an important factor in the decision of the leaders of the Rhineish Women's League or the Flores Liga. So for German men, so men's rights, the German men and the black horror propaganda emphasized on white males, the white male impotency in the face of Africans' alleged various sexual appetites, and violence ultimately as judgebated in the sense of emasculation in the aftermath of military defeat in 1918. So legacies and significance especially in popular culture, and of course Nazi, East Germany, and even today. But one of the most problematic legacies of the Schwarzschild campaign was a social stigmatization of children in the Rhineland mother and African French soldiers, or what we would call in the Weimar period, the Rhineland bastards. Those calling for forced sterilization and exile of these children remain unsuccessful, however. In contrast, no legal or moral obligation or obstacles 
prevented the compulsory sterilization of hundreds of Afro-German descendants of French colonial soldiers under the Nazi regime. During the invasion of France of 1940, the German Hrammach massacred thousands of African French soldiers as well. The racial hatred fomented by the Schwarzschild campaign contributed to the fateful to make these war crimes possible. The history of the Schwarzschild highlights the lasting impact of World War I, the atrocities, the race relations, the complex alliances, and of course, imperialism and nationalism both within and in, in these colonies. And of course, propaganda. On post-war discourse of gender, race, and nation, important elements of black horror, important elements of black horror propaganda were modeled in allies' depictions of barbaric, ape-like Germans or the Hun raping innocent Belgian women and children. Simultaneously, the Schrastrosram campaign, built on wartime German propaganda against allied colonial soldiers, now combined into one as the Schrastrosram, ape-like creatures raping and destroying German Rheinisch women. The initial success of the Schrastrosram campaign the initial success of the Schwarzschild campaign underlined the preservation of the nature of racial and gender anxieties. So, the initial success of the Schwarzschild campaign underlined the pervasive nature of racial and gender anxieties in the post-war world. It illustrates a war inducted and the shift towards a new. It illustrates the war inducted shift towards a new type of popularism, foreign policy and of course racial sentiment, are all colonial soldiers created equal, and the discourse of the center theme of sexual victimization of women, and of course of men, and, and children. I, I don't know why after children, but it's a weird world we live in these days. Of course, um, during the Nazi era, of course you heard World War II, the systematic killing of wartime prisoners, which was seen in the war story as well in Battlefield Five. But during the early 1940s, so 1940 France, as they said, not let into Operation Dragoon. So, while attempting to plan a war crime, why didn't you just set it in 1940? Is beyond me. Um, also, there were some neo Nazis in East Germany, believe it or not, the place to eradicate fascism, where fascism is here. During the era of the Gabahita, or what we would call a guest worker, mostly from Cuba, China, Socialist countries, of course, I can name all of them, and even people that aligned with Soviet until the 1990s. So basically, there were a couple of Gebheitsha. I can't pronounce the word because I can't see it on my screen, but I know what I'm talking about. Guest worker, I should say. There were a lot of in, there were a lot of um, neo Nazi and even like normal Germans, because this was the situation. So in a communist country. Everybody is created equal, except for guest workers, as guest workers get better rations, better places to stay, and generally do less work for propaganda purposes. So, in the height of that, sure there are some right-wing neo-Nazis, but if I'm in a state that says that all of us are created equal, we get the same pay, we get the same car, we get the same apartment, we get the same house, we get the same land, we get the same whatever, um, shouldn't it be obvious that people coming from outside, especially Mozambique, poor African countries, should pretty much get the same thing because that would be paradise to them? So basically, um, there was this documentary. I will link it. I promise. It's just a lot of footage, guys. 1989 is a lot of footage. Also, update about 1989 because I don't know which will go first, first or forced. I don't know what to go forced. I want some water. Uh, seriously, uh, I don't know what to go first, but. Um, uh, we got hit by another block country international. So what I'm gonna do this time is just put some 1980s synth wave over it. I'm gonna try two versions. Um, if the other one stays up, well, good on that. If the other one doesn't, well, you have the synth wave version. I'm sorry, is what I could have done. But um, if you wanna save it and just watch it offline, uh, you can with the original audio, or I can send it to you if you want. But yeah, the final thematic version is going up in synth wave um, sorry about that also I think that's about it um, pretty damn good uh, a bit la a bit sh a bit rough on time 40 minutes but 
I, I, I really breeze through this one. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. 40 minutes for 10 minutes. I'll take it. Uh, I might re-record the first part, but I, I honestly think after I, I did it pretty good. So I'm not even gonna vex about it. Um, lose my my um da -da 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 normal voice. So that's pretty cool. Um, I run out of things to say. I'm also in Facebook jail. Um, I, I'm in WhatsApp jail as well. Gonna get my new phone next week, hopefully. So amen to that. And of course, um, remember Wuhan Shilo. Wash your hands. Desanitize areas. And of course, remember, stay healthy, wear a mask. And if you know anyone recently coming from China, mainland China, or Wuhan in particular, please do not be xenophobic, but please keep your distance from the affected person. They may or may not be carrying the disease. But um, I also read as well that the Asians have a particular lung type and blood type, which makes them more susceptible to um, respiratory diseases. But still, you know, you could got some of that passed down. So you don't want to be too sure about that. And even if you got it, stay away from your Asian friends so they might not contract it. Um, also, Wuhan and Zhejiang and Hubei is in what you will call the Rust Belt of China. So, of course, um, there's a lot of fog, coal, bur coal burning and other respiratory things that could affect your lungs as well. A lot of people have asthma as well. And um, yeah, that's it. Wash hands. Wuhan Jai Lao. We're in this together, but five feet apart. That's the new slogan. We're in this together, boys, but stay five feet apart. And Also, um, before finish, uh, don't trust anything coming out of China right now. It is a communist paradise. I know I, I've probably been banned in China like four times already, so I'm not even worried at this point. But um, just be very cautious. They're not liars, but um, those numbers aren't adding up. And um, just be careful, dudes. And uh, I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoy your day. Learn something. And remember. Wuhan Shai Lao, five feet apart. Uh, also, going back to Battlefield 5, so if you're gonna catch me, Marmot, um, Psycho, um, 4 or 5, I'm coming back tonight. I'm gonna start downloading now while I edit. Hopefully, that doesn't hit a rigor mortis or um, Fifteen million dollars worth of cocaine, cocaine beer, dude. That's my next video, dude. World War One is done. All right, I'm just kidding, but getting back into the swing. We're back at World War One, but also this is a Black History Month video, so I'm um, killing two birds with one stone, and um, a third bird for Wuhan, China. Anyway, keep safe. This is already enough to edit, and I'm already dreading going through all this footage, but um. It could get released tomorrow as well. I don't mind that either. Could do like two day edits. Like edit 20 minutes tonight, edit 20 minutes tomorrow, and uh, finish up. Um, this also is going back to gameplay. So if you like that, um, if you like that, um, I should say uh, real life, real life um, footage, um, you're not going to find that here. I will. First segment, I will put it a little bit more. And actually show you propaganda but besides that I'll try and mix both worlds together okay but mostly gameplay which takes a long time to edit trust me I go MLG hard but one kill one kill five kills one kill one kill that counts as an assist that shit is hard to edit and uh, I do find just putting like black colonial soldiers bloop the end so I do like the challenging editing gameplay, so there is that. Yeah, I, I do find things that are challenging very, you know, like over the edge, you know, like giving me like, you know, that kind of feeling like, 
yeah, I could take the easy way out, but I'm going to do it like this. So, there's that. But I will concede. I will concede to those who want to... Um, to those who actually want footage. Um, anyway, so what we learned today, Swash or Slam. It is basis in myths, but is semi through, but mostly in myths and exaggerated. Sure, there were rapes by Maoris and, um, of course, Senegalese Teleros. The Indians conducted themselves very well, I should say. And, of course, the um, Indo Chinese are pretty good. Uh, can't penetrate anything that bad. Um, I'm just playing guys, I'm just playing, but seriously, um, I guess that's about it, the Hainan bastards, the neo-nazis of 1954 to 1998, and of course there is um, World War II and the systematic execution of the Senegalese terror laws in northern France in 1940, but there's an interesting thing about this as well, the Germans actually did not kill all of them, will actually send them back to camps and then reassign them to units because um, there are a lot of people fighting for freedom and saw Germany as the way out so it was very interesting to see the rare Mac was not all blonde hair and blue eyes literally literally the only blonde hair blue eyes regiment is actually the Norwegians which the Germans consider like the fullest the fullest of I think the fullest of Aryans like like they're second class Aryan citizens but are pretty like next to Germans at that point. Which is weird. You gotta read up on that. Sweden, Norway. But um anyway, uh I have rambled on for far too long. I know it's like three, four minutes, but uh thanks again for watching. This voice is pretty cool. And uh nineteen eighty nine lives on boys. Um, learn something and um remember propaganda is what you make of it and propaganda is obviously water with a little bit of dirt sure the little bit of dirt can't hurt you but every time you drink one glass of water with one dirt there's one more dirt going in one more dirt going in until it piles up in your stomach and now you have dirt in your stomach so anyway learn something what I mean by that is like a quote like the propaganda has an ear to truth like for every one lie told there's like half the truth in it so and for half the lie there's every truth and for every truth there's half a lie so it's a yin and yang you have to base propaganda off of something so anyway guys hope you enjoy hope you learned something i just heard footsteps so um yeah i'm ready to karate chop somebody if it's not the kids I'll probably karate chop the kids too. Anyway, Wuhan, Chai Lao, learn something. Slash the is not cool. My nigga. <laughs>